I am Valerie Plain. I am a former covert CIA operations officer. I'm also a mother of twins. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a speaker, I'm an activist on nuclear issues, and I have been invited to this festival. Um, I did a, a, a talk on the background of how I came to be uh, known as a more public figure, and I'm also participating in a panel on global populism. What I was doing for the CIA, I was recruiting foreign spies to provide hopefully uh, good critical intelligence to senior U.S. policymakers. My particular expertise was counter nuclear proliferation. Essentially that means making sure bad guys do not get a nuclear weapon. Wow. July 2003, my husband, Ambassador Joe Wilson, wrote an op-ed piece for the New York Times. In it, he went after the central premise or rationale that the Bush White House gave for going to war in Iraq, which was an imminent nuclear threat. And uh, as a result, about a week later, senior administration officials leaked my covert CIA identity, essentially as payback. Um, yes, I have read it. Uh, I would say that that whole time period you know, here we are 15 years on from the invasion of Iraq, and it is a decision that I think will go down in history as probably one of the worst foreign policy decisions in the United States and perhaps in the United Kingdom, although it has a much uh, longer history than the United States. Nevertheless, the, the UK at that time under Pr uh, Prime Minister Tony Blair uh, was famously, you know, closely allied with US choices on this. Uh, what I saw somewhat contemporaneously, and even more so today, of course, knowing what we know, is that the U.S. administration was set to go to war with Iraq. Uh, the policy famously was, uh, the intelligence was famously wrapped around the policy rather than intelligence driving policy. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Significant weapons of mass destruction, in particular nuclear, were found of any sort. The United States government at the very highest levels knew that. We had recruited uh, the foreign minister, the Iraqi foreign minister, uh, or he was a source providing intelligence, um, and others. And uh, again, extremely complicated question, but why the United States at the highest levels chose to ignore the understanding of that and still proceeded uh, is the subject of many, many books and lots of ink. Um, but yeah, they, uh, I think it was Richard Pearl who was in the Pentagon in the run-up to the war and shortly thereafter, um, talking about how, or Paul Wolfowitz, excuse me, um, if you will, the marketing of the war in la the latter half of 2002. Um, how you market a war. And the thing that gets people to sit up and take notice is, is go, hey, psst, they got a nuclear weapon. Um, that makes people pay attention. Whether it's in the US or the UK, uh, the politicization of intelligence is always a possibility and always a threat and always must be guarded against. It happens and you try to pull back and reestablish semblance of trust with the general public. Very difficult because of the nature of intelligence business, of course. Um, if it continues to happen, you're a banana, you're a banana, you become a banana republic. Um, but I, I think there is an argument, argument to be made that in part we are where we are in the United States today and the general trend of populism that we're seeing throughout the world, Western Europe for sure, um, can be traced back to 9-11 and the aftermath. Uh, going to war uh, on essentially trumped up charges, uh, democratic institutions being eroded in ways that we, we didn't fully appreciate at the time, a deep mistrust of those institutions. Um, it's, it's created, so it was created a world to where we are today where you sort of have people with pitchforks out in the streets, 
you've had enough. 